protests in Niger, the ousted Niger, the ousted U.S. Uh, leader, has urged the U.S. and entire international community to help restore constitutional order after last week's coup. Writing in the Washington Post, President Mohamed Bazoum said he was writing as a hostage. Unrest has erupted in the West African state since he was overthrown. Well, let's speak to our correspondent, Catherine Biranga, who has been following the story from Nairobi for us. And Catherine, what exactly did the president have to say? He's under military detention, so it is quite surprising he was actually able to speak to journalists. Exactly. We don't know how he managed to get this message to the Washington Post. He's been under military detention for a week now. The military who took power from him were actually his presidential guards. They were meant to be guarding him in the presidential palace. But despite his circumstances, he was really critical of the army in Niger. He said they had no vision. And he defended his record because he's been accused of not taking the country's security seriously, of being too allied to Western powers. And he said, well, look at my record. He says that um, Islamist attacks, militant attacks in the country had actually fallen under his government. And then he made a call to the international community saying they should step in and try and stop this coup because he says that Niger is what he calls the last bastion, one of the few countries that was still democratic and was an ally to Russia as well, which is a big concern in the Sahel region where Moscow is gaining influence. Did leader, we've had this call from the ousted leader, but is there any sign that the international community is listening? I mean, so far this week, we've just seen the evacuation of Western citizens and embassy staff. I think the international community is listening because there have been several calls for the democratic elected government to be reinstated. So from the United States, from Britain, from European countries, even Russia, where there is concern that maybe Russia might try to use this instability to gain influence, the government in Russia says they want to see a return to the constitutional order. But what can they do if the military in Niger has dug in as it has? Because the military says it's not giving up power despite calls for it to step down, despite sanctions being imposed on the military leaders in the country. They say they're not leaving. So that means even though there have been aid cuts, sanctions, there's little else that the international community can do at the moment to help the besieged leader. And you mentioned Russia a little earlier on. What is the extent of Russia's involvement in the region? In This week we've seen people waving Russian flags. Yes, so we have to look at several countries in the region. They're in the Sahel, in West Africa. And so you have countries like Burkina Faso and Mali, which also experienced recent coups. In Mali in particular there, the military government has allied itself very closely to Moscow. It's invited uh, fighters from the Wagner paramilitary group there to help fight Islamist insurgents in the country. In Burkina Faso, the government there is, is forging closer allies with Moscow. But there is also a cultural aspect to, to this as well, a social political aspect, which is there is a lot of resentment against Western countries, as well as the French former colonial power in this part of the world. And people really t think that should military governments take over, they'll be able to kick out um, French forces, French influence in the region. And they're looking perhaps to Russia as maybe another ally, a fresh ally for them as they try to rebuild their country's security or rebuild their economies. So when we've seen these protests in Niger, We've seen people carrying, some people carrying Russian flags and saying long live Putin, hoping that these, uh, that Moscow might come in and try and, you know, better their situation. But it's important to say that even where Moscow has taken a lead role, for example, in Mali, we're still seeing um, Islamist attacks. We're still seeing a strained economic situation. So it might appear as a quick fix for frustrated people in the Sahel region, but maybe long term, it doesn't offer the opportunities that they might hope for.